Hello. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. I'm talking to Ahmed. Yes, I am Ahmed. Okay. Uh, hello, Ahmed. I'm Sanmeet. I'm talking to you from a place in India. It's called Chandigarh. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yeah, actually, I haven't heard about uh, yeah, that's Can okay. you repeat it? Uh, the city's name is Chandigarh. It's in North India. It's close to Delhi. You must have heard of Delhi. Yeah, Delhi. Yeah, I know Delhi. Okay, so I live about five hours away from Delhi by uh, car. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, you're not from Kerala because uh, all tourists that I have met, uh, okay. they were from uh, Kerala. But you're the first one. <laughs> you live in the north of okay. uh, yes. India. Yes, I live very far away from Kerala. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. So it's okay. all different from Kerala. I I I think Kerala it's uh, in the southern part of India. Yes, the southernmost, pretty much, extreme mm -hmm. end. Uh huh. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. let let me guess. So uh, Delhi, it's not the capital of India. Mumbai. It is. is the Delhi uh, is the capital of India. Uh, Mumbai is about... like a it's a financial hub. Like lots of major businesses play uh, are located there in Mumbai. It's like the financial capital. Oh, that's, that's why business... it's famous. Yeah, that's where yeah. all the famous business people live. The rich, the richest people, the uh, Indian people live. There, I think, there in yeah, the richest probably, yeah. Uh, because it also has uh, all the actors living there. Uh, it's the hub for the Indian film industry also. Ah, Bollywood. Yes. In, Mo in Mumbai. That's right. Wow, interesting. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, so uh, I am from Iraq, in Middle East. Oh, uh, yes. I read uh, that you're from Baghdad. Yeah, from know. Baghdad. Y yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, right, Baghdad my pronunciation. My pronunciation yeah. is a little different. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we uh, in English we say uh, Baghdad, but uh, in Arabic we say Baghdad. With yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm so, kind of giving the Indian pronunciation, so that would be influenced by my mother tongue. So I say Baghdad. Yeah, uh, but mm. uh, you you were great. I like me. I couldn't uh, pronounce your city. <laughs> Yeah, okay. That's all right. That's okay. Uh, yeah. It's a strange name. Unique name. It's different. So over there, it gets difficult. Yeah, because maybe... Uh, have you heard about Baghdad before or this is your first time? Oh, yes. My mother used to talk about it all the time because she visited Baghdad uh, when she was 16 years old. Um, wow. my, my maternal grandfather, he lived in Baghdad for about five years. He was an irrigation engineer, so he worked there for five years. He was uh, about to get an extension also, but I think uh, his health was not that good, so he returned. But he made yeah. a lot of money there. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, So, and this is for uh, a long time ago, right? Like for uh, I believe it must. 19th? Yeah, let me guess. So probably in the 70s, 1970s. Seventies, uh, yeah, hmm. yeah. I wasn't born there in seventies. I, I, I yeah. born in eighties. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about you. Like, how have you always lived in Baghdad, or are you from a different place? Um, I born and raised in Baghdad, so okay. it's my hometown, Baghdad. Okay. Also, yeah. Also, my parents uh, born and raised in Baghdad. Okay. But you seem to have a Western accent. Have you lived in another country? Did you study in another country? Or does everybody speak the way you speak in Iraq? So uh, do you think that uh, I have an accent? Actually, I'm not sure. I've never really been to Middle East. But yeah. you said that in English we say Baghdad. So I mean, why, uh, that's the very Western pronunciation. So I was wondering that if you've lived in an English speaking country, no, actually, I haven't uh, been to uh, a country that speak in, in English. Uh, but, okay. uh, but you know, I like to speak in English. And uh, I have been practicing my English and enhancing my oh. accent uh, since okay. two years. Yeah, since the pandemic okay. started. So right. uh, that's why I got, like, uh, American accent. 
Okay, right. So yeah. uh, that's interesting. All right. I think everybody started developing a new skill during the pandemic. So it was, I don't know, in that way, it was a productive period for many people. Exactly, yeah, because we were, we were uh, uh, having uh, uh, a lockdown and uh, mm. we didn't have, uh, 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 actually we had time, uh, a lot of time mm. uh, to improve uh, English or any other uh, hobbies, you know. Mm. So yeah, yeah I, I, I used that time to improve my uh, English. Mm. Thank God for the internet, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. On the internet, I made all of yeah. uh, international friends. I mm. uh, I practiced my English with them, and mm. the Indian people, Mexican, Brazilian, and uh, they were unique because they have unique English. Oh wow, that's interesting. This is a platform, and I found it very interesting because you guys okay. you follow um, a certain uh, curriculum that mm. every time i get uh, I, I get the session i uh, i see uh, a, a new topic for me a new mm. words yeah and discuss with mm. my tutors about uh, uh, these uh, topics so mm. uh, yeah uh, i learned this stuff um, and mm. i learned i learned that uh, i don't uh, i can't like ask about uh, their uh, the, uh, like their salary it's uh, it's not good for uh, for yeah. uh, American culture and actually mm. it's it's not good for uh, the whole world. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Uh, just like this stuff. I learned mm. that the, you know the culture differences. Mm. Right. Yeah. But eventually, I think after three months, you were able to talk to them a little more comfortably. Yeah, exactly. I learned a lot about about them. I I learned how they think and uh, mm. how how they have like thoughts about Middle East or, or about uh, other countries. And then mm. I I started uh, to uh, to uh, to like uh, to manage my no, not manage uh, mm. like to have the uh, to manage. Oh, I forgot the word. Like to master to master the conversation. Mm. I think that comes with practice, basically. Even if you know all the words, how to use them, it's an art form that needs uh, repetition and uh, exposure to new kind of people. Uh, yeah. So when people join Clappingo, they ask me, how will you help me? I have a bad accent. I am bad at grammar. How will you help me? I just tell mm. them that whatever you know of English language, you get a place to use that without fear of any negative consequence because a lot of people, they need to speak English only at workplace. It's not a part of their personal life. So, right, to switch that, to switch your language suddenly when you're faced with your boss. Really yeah. Different. And, yeah. you know, you know, you know when, when I speak with you, um, okay, I feel comfortable. But I like if I get into a job, I have to speak with my boss directly without like making mistakes, and right. uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use uh, my words carefully, uh, mm. and I'm gonna use uh, like certain words uh, that's related mm. with my job. For example, if I work with oil refinery, I will use mm. uh, these expressions and words. Uh, mm. So uh, you know, it's a challenging, a little bit challenging mm. for for the English learners. Hmm, that's right. And I just tell them, if you have actually uh, interacted with different people in English language enough, even if you're really anxious in front of somebody you really want to impress, you will be able to uh, calm down your nerves in a way to be able to say the right things. You won't just freeze and go blank because that's like <laughs> everybody's worst na nightmare, right? That happened to be actually in the first months <laughs> of for practicing English. Yeah, like... Yeah, I, I, I want to express myself. I want to express my ideas, but I don't know how. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's yeah. like frustrated. Yeah. So you can't really do that when you're practicing with a friend or with a colleague because they will run out of patience. But if you yeah. have actually, if you're paying for a service where there's a person patiently waiting for you to frame an answer, 
you can really push through and eventually the time it takes you to overcome your blank moments it reduces i mean that exactly. is personally what i've observed I, uh, yeah exactly this is uh, the important uh, point that you mentioned about it that uh, if someone want to uh, improve uh, his speaking english and go for uh, free applications uh, you will not uh, get uh, the right uh, skills for speaking yeah. and uh, i like uh, these platforms uh, yeah. and you will uh, he will like uh, speak in english and the tutor will uh, correct uh, the mistakes uh, like for example uh, uh, the pronunciations or uh, um mm-hmm. you know the missing words sometimes just just like uh, uh, minutes ago uh, a couple of minutes ago I, I forgot i forgot the word and then i i exposed myself uh, like mm. i look i looked up uh, the word in my mind right yeah that happens actually that happens to me as well when we are discussing yeah. a challenging topic we feel the need to look away so that we can think <laughs> harder and then we come back to the listener yeah so your that brain typically like, happens yeah, yeah your, your brain just like google like wow i need the word <laughs> quickly yeah <laughs> Yeah, I think this is an act of concentration. I mean that's what I would how I would understand it. That the other person is thinking really hard like that the other person is digging hard to come up with a thoughtful comment. Yeah, because uh, English is not our uh, first language and mm. uh, second uh, we don't uh, speak uh, in English in our daily basis like uh, in mm. the markets and um, in our houses. Yeah. So that's why uh, sometimes we need like seconds to uh, understand what we yeah. want to say next. That's right. Yeah. yeah. But thankfully with practice those seconds they become microseconds and it gets easier 